in this lesson, I'm going to show you various ways to transfer your designs onto your wood uh, using templates or just transferring a photocopied image. Um, I know I've explained this in several of the lessons individually, but I'm just going to make one lesson on just focusing on techniques of doing this. I'm going to first show you um, the technique of using plastic. Now this is just a standard vellum paper, and so is this. And what's nice about this is if you can draw on your design on the wood, and then you want to be able to transfer it. So what do you do is have your design on the wood, and then take a piece of vellum paper, then you can trace on your design, and then cut it out and do repeat of that. And what's nice about this is also you take it, you see how it's a half of a leaf, you take it there and then transfer it and trace around the outside. So you can do symmetrical carvings with that. You can take it and flip it. Um, this one is an interesting, it's a scroll, but I took these little strategic notches out. And so this is the actual line that I'm... Um, transferring that edge right there and then I take a little bit of a larger scoop out of that so I can fit my pencil lead in there and then I can have an accurate curl or scroll around that. So uh, that comes in real handy when you've got a lot of inside details. Then what you do is you just connect the lines. So let me just show you how that works. Now I'm actually going to use a white pencil here and it uh, works a lot better in um, darker wood, like walnut. Okay, and then, well, I probably should do the outline too, but I just wanted to show you the, how to do the inside. But the only problem with this thinner plastic, it is sometimes difficult to run a pencil along the edge. So I'm just going to show you another option. All right, yeah. I should probably sharpen my pencil too. And this is actually a charcoal pencil, which works really well. Okay, so then what you do is you come back and then you just have a few lines to connect. Just keep the curve. And then you've got those inside lines transferred. Okay, so that is a really good way of doing that. You just need to make sure that these little, uh, <laughs> that these strategic inside lines are cut, um, <laughs> are cut well because uh, you can end up cutting all these inside lines and then the whole um, template will fall apart. So you have to sort of think about it, about strategically placing those and then the best positions to do that detail. Um, here's another detail of this. Again, this is sort of a vellum paper. Um, quite thin, a little too thin to really run your pencil along, along the edge. But I also have holes here, so I can't really, well, I probably could end up cutting a little section out of there so I could transfer details. But um, these, um, the templates like this are really best for doing the outside and then maybe a few detail lines, and then you're just going to have to kind of manually draw the rest of them. Now here's another one, but this is a much thicker plastic, and again, there's there's actually a vein line that comes here, so I just cut a line like that, and then sort of a, that this one is the line that actually clears the way so that I can fit a pencil line along there. you got to make sure you're <laughs> drawing on the right line, or on the right side of that cut. Um, this is just a thicker piece. You can find this in office stores. Um, a lot of times they have the page dividers. You can use that. This, I believe, is um, a... This one in particular is a sort of a disposable plastic chopping mat. Um, you can find it in restaurant stores or dollar stores, or sometimes they have them in... Uh, those where you can you know, buy them for a dollar a piece and it's very good because this is actually a smooth side and it's rough on this side so you can take and actually pencils work better than this but you can draw your design on there it sticks a little better or you can take if you don't have a rough side you can actually take and um, uh, use a marker that actually goes on a smooth surface they have markers like that so, um, this is probably the most ideal. Again, these are a little flimsy. Um, both are 
um, transparent enough where I could transfer or, or trace over a design. This is actually for the leaf on the knee of a cabriole leg and you can see there you line that up and just it's thick enough where you can actually tape it. You can tape it and then run your pencil along the edge and um, this one in particular there's not that many inside lines. It really is an outline which really uh, that needs to be transferred. And you see how you can sort of roll it down the knee, it flexes. The only part that is an issue is if you have a knee that is really curved, like a quarter round type of thing, you can roll it this way, but it just gets a little distorted if you try to curve it across the whole surface. So part of this is gonna have to be, you know, line it up as close as you can, tape it down, lock it down, get as much as you can transfer on, and then a lot of it's probably going to have to be done by hand. Here's another template that I've used. This is just a manila folder that's thick enough, again, where I want to run the pencil along it. So what I did was this top part, this is actually just a photocopy of my design, and I glued it on to the manila folder, and then I just cut out the outside. And then again, this is the strategic areas here. I know it looks kind of strange, but I'll just show you how that works. From here, there, these are those sort of center veins. And then that one, that one, and that one. And then, of course, the outside. Oops. Yeah, good idea to tape it because it shifts on you if you... <laughs> It moves. All right, so then what you can do is just connect those and you can get a pretty good accurate uh, design transferred. Again, you want to make sure that you're actually going on the right side of that shape. So all I did in making this was just take a gouge that fits these, fits that curve, and then just take whatever will end up sort of scooping out that area. So I take a gouge that fits that edge right there and then used another one to really just clear the space. Another thing you can do is use a piece of aluminum and this is just something I got from Lowe's and you can actually cut this out with um, regular scissors. Make sure it's not your best quality scissors but the nice thing about this is you can sort of curve it and shape it and it will stay curved. This also you see, um, this is actually for egg and dart, and you can, and this is a very fragile one. It's very old and very used. And this is just, this is just that manila folder. And so we've got this as a line that I transfer, that as a line, that as a line, or sorry, that one inside, and that one. And then I've got a center point, and then I've got these two points. So each of those sort of signifies guidelines that I will need to um, make the egg and dart. And this one is where I divide it off. This is a full egg, full egg, and then in the middle of the dart. Okay, so basically from there to there is one step, and I just line it up along the length of the molding and make these marks. And then it just stays consistent. This is a thicker uh, cardboard, same thing, um, but I was able to actually cut out all of the spaces. You can use a cereal box if you want. You can also take a piece of thin cardboard and there's the uh, ball and claw foot template. You can use that if you know you're going to be making a lot of them and you just want to store it and it's never going to distort. And the same with this. This is actually a profile and so um, that's something where you can line it along and make sure that that is exactly or correct exact a profile of what you're carving. And so this is really if you're just really wanting to make a solid indestructible template you can use this. And um, a lot of the other ones they are you can take something like this and you can see it gets a little flimsy and a little, uh, a little difficult. It can sort of fall apart. If I was going to do this again, I would probably end up using that thick plastic. It holds together a little better and doesn't really rip in these areas that are being used a lot. It gets very, very thin. 
I've really resorted to using that plastic template a lot more than anything else from for a template material. Another way you can transfer a design with a lot of details is with carbon paper. And uh, you can find carbon paper now at office stores, you can find them at woodworking stores. But this is really, um, <laughs> you need to make sure that you put the carbon side down. And um, the difficulty with this is if you are using a dark wood, like this walnut, and you trace along, and it's sometimes a good idea to use a pen to trace because um, it just makes a very solid, um, solid, definite line. And I'll just show you what's happening here. Okay, you can see that it's it can sort of get lost in the dark wood. Another material that you can use is transfer paper, and it comes in all sorts of colors, and you get this from hobby stores or arts and craft stores, and you can get white, red, yellow, gray, and blue. So um, if you wanted, let's say, part of your template to be one color, just to sort of set it off, one color, and then part of it, maybe the leaves, to be another one, so they're all set differently, you could certainly do that. So what you would do is tape your design down and then just transfer it onto, tape it down and then transfer the, the lines. And the lighter colors obviously will show up a little bit more. Let me just show you the white was really great for, um, the white is really great for walnut. Let me just show you the what happens. And you see how bold that line is. Um, it's really great for just being able to see it. Now the one drawback with this is whatever you draw, or however you draw this, that's what's going to be transferred. So if you sort of get off the line a little bit, that little getting off the line is going to be transferred onto the wood. But uh, there's another trick to getting the exact duplicate of this. You want to take a really good, high-quality photocopy. Just take it to um, an office store, take it to um, whatever they have where you want to actually have a toner cartridge. Um, you can also do laser printer. But what you want to make sure of is, well, inkjet does not work. I've tried it. <laughs> it doesn't work. But um, what you do is you turn it over, and there's a few different ways you can do this. Okay, one way to transfer this design down is you use um, a hot iron and just rub it along there and the heat of the iron will cause it to transfer onto the, um, the wood. Now again, if you're using dark wood, then it's probably going to have, uh, or it's going to be a little difficult to see. Um, this is a little bit better maybe for basswood, something like that, so you can have a dark um, transfer of that. Or using that same really good quality photocopier and you just take lacquer thinner and, in a cloth and you just rub the lacquer thinner onto the uh, piece of paper and that will also transfer that dark um, photocopied image onto your wood. Now just be careful when you're doing this, um, it is a reverse image so um, you just need to be aware of that. Now make sure when you're doing that you're using gloves and you know, adequate ventilation because it's pretty smelly stuff and toxic. Now the one thing that is nice about both the process of uh, ironing this and also using the lacquer thinner is that every single line is transferred and I've even seen where if you've got half tones or gray areas it'll transfer the gray and um, so you don't have to sit there and draw every little line and it transfers it accurately. So if you've got a very, very detailed design and you need to have it really accurate, then this is really the best method to do this without um, transferring with an iron. Now make sure um, if you're doing it with the iron that uh, your wood itself is very, very smooth because it's basically just going to hit the high spots. Mm -hmm.